Hi, welcome back to my channel. And we are here to talk about these loving hip hop antics. Now, before we get into Erica and Spice, I want to talk about Sierra. Now, since Sierra debuted on Love and Hip Hop, I like her. Okay, I like Sierra. Okay, Sierra is about her business. She's about her money. Okay, like she's gone through a lot, and she comes out on top every time. And I admire women like that. I really, really do. But why is Sierra in everybody's business lately? Like in everybody's business, the way that she came after Scrappy. It was so embarrassing. It was so cringe worthy. Like, I don't I don't understand this. I just don't understand like how come she kept coming at Scrappy and keeps putting her nose in their business. If the man's wife can't get through to him, I don't understand what makes you think that you can get through to him. I don't understand what makes you think that you're gonna cost him in public and he's going to be receptive to anything you have to say. I just don't understand that. In this episode, she's coming at Diamond, and it's like, <laughs> you played yourself. You played yourself. You wanted to show out in front of the cameras and make it seem like you meant more to this girl than you actually meant. And this girl told you to your face, like, girl, I didn't even know that was the same Sierra from high school. Like, girl, I, you played yourself. You left yourself open to the disrespect by getting involved in other people's business. What made you feel like you can get in these grown folks' business and it was going to be okay? I'm still trying to understand. When you was going through your own shit, Sierra, when your man, when your husband was cheating on you with your assistant, I don't remember all these ladies coming to your defense. I don't remember none of these ladies coming to your defense when your husband was cheating on you with your assistant. But you sitting up here trying, oh, I'll, I could check you. I could check. You can't check nobody because everybody's grown. You don't pay these people's bills. I just feel like when Scrappy called you a bitch, he was not trying to call you a bitch. But even if he called you one, you put yourself in that position for him to call you out your name because you are in his business. And you don't have nothing to do with nothing. You really, really don't. And I know Sierra feels like she has Bambi's back. But girl, to be honest, I always felt like the friendship between Bambi and Sierra was fake because Bambi was never a good friend to you. Y'all remember a couple seasons back, Sierra was being sued, I believe, by some woman that said that she assaulted her. Carly Red was a witness that it was a verbal altercation. It was not a physical one. And I think the court date kept getting pushed back. They go to court, Carly was late, and she was in the wrong building or the wrong courtroom, but they ended up pushing it back again, so it really didn't even matter. They didn't really need Carly to be there, but Carly was there, and then later on, I think Sierra had a party that night, and Sierra ended up mushing Carly in the head, and then her two friends jumped Carly. Y'all remember that, right? After the fight, Sierra was so distraught because she realized that she was wrong for that. She took her frustrations out on Carly and Carly got hurt in the process and she knew she was wrong. And what did Bambi do? Bambi was like, no, Sierra, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. She was hyping her up. You know you was wrong. And you have a friend trying to tell you that you were not wrong in a situation that you were, that you were absolutely wrong in. That's not your friend. You should have been reevaluating your situation with Miss Bambi. That's not a person that has your back. Someone that encourages you to do stupid shit that is not your friend. So I don't care what Scrappy said to her. I don't care if Scrappy called her a dog face bitch. I wouldn't care because you overstepped your boundaries. At the end of the day, what Bambi and Erica both want is everyone around them to put pressure on their husbands to do what they want them to do. And since they're not getting their way, they're throwing hissy fits. I don't remember anyone doing that for you, Sierra. You too grown to be in these type of situations. Now you into it with Diamond. For what? And in present day, you say you're not even friends with these two girls. Well, I guess it's better late than never. You done got it together, I guess. Behind the scenes, you done figured it out. And I hope you really truly figured it out. Because them hoes was never your friends. They just never were. Okay, so this Erica and Spice sit down Ponderosa situation that Shikana is hosting. First of all, can I just say I find it funny that Shikana is hosting this? 
Because was it last season? Was it Erica trying to fight you, girl? She's trying to fight you and Mita over the same bullshit. I guess, girl. I also want to say that when they first dropped the trailer of this and they showed the situation between Spice and Erica, I really thought I was going to be on Erica's side. I really thought, I'm like, ooh, I think Spice is doing a lot. Because, you know, they were showing a lot of stuff that Spice was doing to Carly. And then she was going off on her and this and that and that and that and that. And then when they dropped the trailer, I was like, damn, I think I might be on Erica's side for once. Well, y'all can cancel that. <laughs> Y'all can cancel that. Now that we've seen the episode, yeah, uh-uh, scratch that. Well, Erica's starting off this conversation by, like, trying to praise Spice and saying, I admire you for going after your dreams and being a single, hardworking mother who loves her kids and never stops. Um, that was cute, but it was fluff. It was fluff, and you could tell that Spice is just like, girl, I'm not buying none of that. Let's get down to business. Let's talk about what's, let's talk about what's on the table. No time for all of this. Um, Erica's explanation... Erica's explanation as to why she made the comment that she made, it made sense. It made sense. Like, oh, you're sitting over here crying over Spice, but I was in a situation similar and you didn't care. You didn't care nothing about it. You had no emotions to what was going on. Um, that made sense. Because if this lady who is a friend of yours and she's probably barely a real friend, y'all are most, really she your coworker. Your coworker is really sick in critical condition and you're crying down the place, but you had your wife, the mother of your kids, was in a critical situation and you didn't give a damn. Um, I could understand why she was like, boy, go sit down. I, I could see that. I can see that. But I can also believe Safari where he was like, yeah, she didn't, she was mad that I cared about your well-being. I could believe that as well. I believe, Saf to be honest, I believe Safari. And the reason why I believe Safari is because if y'all remember back when they were getting married, I think Erica needs to go back and watch that season and reflect. Okay. I don't know what season it was, but the season when they was in New York and she was getting married. She needs to go back and watch that entire season and reflect. Because that answer to what you're going through right now, I think it lies in that season, girl. But anyways, do y'all remember at the time, Safari and Yandy had become very, very, very close. Mendeecees was still in prison. He was about to get out. But Yandy and Safari had this very tight bond. Y'all know Safari went through a lot after his breakup with Nikki and all the different, different stuff that was going on with him. And Yandy really was like family to him. Do y'all remember how Erica used to talk about Yandy? She was very jealous hearted. Like, oh, why are you talking to her? Is she like your girlfriend? And she had all this issue and contempt for Yandy. And it was like, you know, he don't want Yandy. You know he don't want Yandy. You had this man acting so funny towards the woman to where she was like, what the hell is going on? You're like my brother. You're around my kids. I've introduced you to my man. You talk to my man. And why are you acting funny? It was because Erica. Erica did that same type of shit. Erica did that same type of shit that he's accusing her of doing to Spice. She was big mad that he had a friendship with Yandy. And when they was about to get married, she didn't want Yandy invited to the wedding. She didn't want Yandy around. All she had to say was negative shit about Yandy. So do I believe she was talking shit about Spice? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because Erica's issue is not really Yandy. It's not Spice. It's not Amara. It's not none of these people. In Erica's mind, she cannot understand why. How? How can Safari leave her? How can Safari make her a single mother? She's telling Spice, oh, I admire you as a single mother. And Spice is saying, you think you're the first one for a man to leave with two kids? She doesn't think she's the first one. She just doesn't think it should be her. Spice, you can be a single mother that works too hard and loves her kids. You could do that. But Erica, Erica can't be that. So the fact that Safari did this to her, she is going to be hurting about this for a very long time because in her mind, she shouldn't be going through nothing like that. That's good enough for the rest of you. It's good enough for Sierra. It's good enough for Spice. It's good enough for all the other women. It's not okay 
for Safari to do that to her. I will never forget, they did like a little, I don't know what it was called, but they did like, you know how they do the little couples games? Erica was pregnant with her daughter and they was playing a little game. And I think one of the questions was, what feature of yours do you feel Safari wants your daughter to have? And she was like, my hair. She answered so quickly, my hair. He loves my hair. He's always looking at it. He didn't believe this was my real hair. This is my hair, my hair, my hair, my hair, my hair. That lets me know that you know you were a fetish to him. You knew that. They put you on a pedestal when they're trying to get you and then they treat you like they treat everybody else. And I feel bad for her, but girl, when it was other women, you didn't care. Now that it's you, you want everyone to care and everyone can't care, sis. When Erica was yelling at Spice and um, Rashida and Kirk and all of them, talking about my daughter, it's about my daughter. She's asking me where her dad is. It's like, Erica, you really need to go back and watch the season that you were getting married. Because I promise you, all the answers are in that season. Did you forget when Sin Santana and Joe Budden had broken up and you were trying to play matchmaker between Joe and Tahiri? You knew that would hurt Sin. You knew that would hurt Sin. You didn't care about her child. You didn't care that her child would be asking his mom questions about where's, their, where's his father. You didn't care about that. You didn't care that Sin was really going through a lot. She was struggling. She was in pain. You didn't care about that. When it was somebody else's child, it didn't matter to you. But now you want everyone to care about your feelings and your child and what you're going through and your experience and your heartache. Why? It was good for them. It should be good for you, too. But back to this sit down. You could tell Spice was on 10 when she walked in the door. She was over it. She didn't want to hear none of the lies. Safari had given her enough voice notes that she didn't want to hear what Erica had to say. And Erica was trying to butter her up. She was trying to butter her up. And she could sit through the bullshit. She wasn't here for nothing. I don't think she's here for anybody's bullshit this season is what we learned. And at first, I was kind of irritated with Spice because I felt like, well, damn, are you just trying to do this for moments? But I don't think she is doing this for moments. She might have a little bit of PTSD because of what she experienced, but she really don't have time for nobody's foolishness. And I really can't even blame her. For someone to wish you bad while you were already in a terrible situation, you're not fooling with them. And she said something to Shekana, I think, in the other sit-down. It was like, Erica don't know how hard I go for her, how hard I fight for her, how much I tell Safari he's wrong for how he's treating her. And then you mean to tell me she wishing me bad? And it's like, I hear her on that. When she said, your son don't even like you. I just said this before on this channel. There is a very distinct line where you're criticizing someone's child and you're criticizing someone's parenting two completely different things i know that i think everybody knows that but the thing about it is when you mention someone's child in any kind of way a lot of times logic goes out the door and emotion takes over so a lot of times if you're speaking on someone's parenting you're going to get the same reaction that you would get if you speak about someone's child And sometimes it's so like the comment could just be so such a way that it really feel like the lines are beyond blurred. It's pretty much the same damn thing in some instances. This particular instance, I'm on the fence. I, I really am on the fence. Um, I don't know. Me and my bestie were talking about this earlier and she was saying that she thinks Erica is triggered because of her own guilt. Like maybe she really didn't do the very best that she could for her kid. She was out here trying to hustle and get it that, you know, she probably has a lot of guilt in, about how she handled her child. And I think so. Um, but Erica is, I think so. I think that's, that's valid. Um, but I don't feel that Spice was trying to attack Erica's son. I just, honestly, I don't really care. When you talk about someone's parenting, you should already know. The moment you open your mouth and you say that, you should already know that if they take it the wrong way, they take it the wrong way. I think they're two different things, but I know that moms and dads, they don't care. 
The moment you mention one, you might as well just say with your full chest how you feel about the entire thing all the way around because you're going to get the same reaction either way. So it is what it is. Um, when she flipped that table, though, at Spice, I thought she was... I was kind of disappointed in Spice because I was like, bitch, you, sh you already knew who you was talking to. You should have known. You should have been ready, sis. You should have been ready. When she was starting to do like this, bitch, you should have met her halfway. You should have helped move that shit away and get her. I wanted to... I'm sorry. <clears throat> bitch, you gonna try to shove a table at me? This woman is not even 100% well. Are you gonna shove a table at her? And Erica, we ain't never seen your hands. You do shit like that all the time, but we never seen you run them hands. We seen you scratch. We seen you pull hair. We seen you throw things, but we never really seen you swing. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong. I probably missed a couple of seasons. I don't know. But we ain't never seen you really fight. You threw that table because that was your big move. And you knew that they was going to run in and break up the fight. Because didn't they start getting security because of Erica's antics? Isn't that the reason they start bringing security to set? Because of Erica? But we still ain't never seen you run them hands, girl. But whatever. Now, her calling this lady blue monkeys and black monkeys or whatever monkeys and da-da-da-da-da, you should have died. Erica, you look stupid. Let me say this first. You sat up there and said that you prayed and fasted for God to heal this woman. And then you turn around and say she should have died. Well, what eyes are God looking at you through at this moment? When he's watching you say this, what is he thinking about you? Shekana was like, girl, you know damn well you did not pray and fast for this lady right here. Stop lying. What kind of praying and fasting you was doing? She said, if you would have prayed and fast for your marriage, you still have your marriage. <laughs> and that's some pick-me-ass shit to say. But honest to God, I was thinking the same thing as I was watching this. I was like, you prayed and fast for her? But you ain't praying fast? Girl, you ain't praying fast for yourself? I don't believe that. I want Shekana, me and her see each other. You didn't pray and fast for yourself, but you prayed and fast for Spice. But if you prayed and fast for, if you prayed and fasted for Spice, why were you upset that Safari was upset at her situation? Erica, you're a liar. Erica, Bambi, and whoever else that she consults with, they sat down there and decided what she was going to say going into that meeting. And when Spice was like, your son hates you, she felt it in her bone because her son probably does hate her. her I won't say hate her, but her son probably has a lot of contempt for her, and she knows it. And that's why it hurt her so bad. I remember she said that she didn't want her son raised in New York. That's why she was in, he was in Florida with her mom. And honestly, I'm not one of those people that judges a woman who gives her child to her mother to raise. As long as the child is in a good environment, I don't, I don't judge that. Because in my family, a lot of that happens. My mom wasn't raised by her mother. She was raised by her aunt and her grandmother. My grandmother raised a lot of her nieces and nephews. Like, everybody in our family was raised by someone else. Like, I don't shame women for that. If you feel like the more stable home is somewhere else, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I don't think she should have shame for it. But I do think that there are other things that Erica has done that she probably does feel shame for. And that's why that's such a trigger for her. Because as a parent, you do the best you can. If the best you can is to give your child to your mother to raise, there is absolutely no shame in that. Because at the end of the day, you want that young, innocent child to have the best chance at life. So I don't know why she's so embarrassed. Because I saw people online talking about, well, Spice's kids is in Jamaica with her mama. Okay. If the best thing for Spice was to come to the States so that she can work and send money so that her children can have a certain type of lifestyle and her mom have a certain type of lifestyle. Because I guarantee you, Spice sends money back home every chance she gets. I'm pretty sure they're living life very comfortably over there. So I, I don't know. Maybe because of my culture, I don't see the problem in that. As long as your child is not being abused and taken advantage of and they're thriving, there's nothing wrong with letting someone else raise your kids. I don't know that I would do that, but I understand that in certain situations, they are just what they are. Everybody doesn't live the same life. We all have different obstacles and different things and different reasons for why we do what we do. So I don't know. That right there didn't, I don't know. I don't know. I think Erica got something she's sitting on that she don't want the rest of the world to know. That's why she flipped that table. But, but about these blue and black monkeys that she was calling Spice, um, for that to be one of the first things that comes out of your mouth because you're angry, goes to show that you've always felt this way about her. 
you felt this way about her. It was on the tip of your tongue. You've been biting your tongue not to say it. And then she's pissed you off. So now you don't give a fuck and you're saying what the fuck you want to say. And I mean, say what you want to say. But my thing is, what I'm really not going to have no tolerance for is people defending it. Like, oh, well, she talked about her kids, so all bets are off. No. I get mad at people every day. I don't start ra throwing out racial slurs. I don't start throwing out phobic remarks because I'm mad at someone. Because that's not on the tip of my tongue. Calling that lady a monkey was on the tip of her tongue because that's how she truly feels. There are so many things that she could have said to that lady. She did not have to say, you blue-haired monkey, or you blue monkey, you monkey, monkey, and making noises. That's how she's always felt. Erica know where her bread is buttered, okay? She knows that she makes her money off of black people. Being in black spaces, being in hip-hop, and the black rappers, music videos, on Love & Hip Hop, and this show, and that show, dating black men, because black men put her on the pedestal because of her hair texture and her complexion, and the fact that she's not black, right? Now, yeah, we know she's Afro-Latina, but she gonna lean into the Latina side more than the Afro side, and it's always been like that. She, we know what it is, but she also likes the fact that she has the dark-skinned black women defending her. She, has, she loves the fact that Remy Ma, she says that Remy Ma used to jump in the fights when her and her baby daddy would get into it, okay? She loves the fact that Bambi is her emotional support human. She loves the fact that Sierra was right there rocking for her. She loves the fact that Shakana is over here organizing sit-downs to defend her, even though she tried to fight Shakana last season. She loves the fact that these black women put her on the pedestal just like these black men put her on the pedestal. And then the moment you disappoint her, you're a black monkey and you should have died. Y'all look ridiculous defending her, saying, oh, well, she called her son, da 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 it don't matter what she said about her son. She could have gone to any insult she wanted to. She could have told that lady she looked like a clown with the blue hair. She could have said anything. She decided to use monkey for a reason. That wasn't a random thing. It wasn't just, oh, I was angry, so I said it. We get angry every day. Does racial slurs jump out of your mouth because you're angry? Erica, just like Evelyn Lozada, have been in environments where they are celebrated because of their non-black features, okay? They have. And you almost can't blame them. You cannot blame them for the simple fact that, okay, in their hood, where they come from, the black dudes is always gassing them up. Oh, you look better than so-and-so, Shantae over there with the 4C hair. You look better than her because she darker. You look better than this other girl because da 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 You can't even blame them for feeling this way. But when you start to get to the ripe ages of your late 30s and 40s and you still letting that rule your thinking, you have a problem. You are a racist. You are a colorist. You are. You are. We all have that petty spirit where we like, I look better than that girl. I this, that, that, and the third. I that, 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 and the this. We all have that pettiness in us. We all do as women. But when you start think, when you say that she's a monkey, y'all be beating y'all chest wanting to say the N word and wanting to do this and wanting to do that. But you call a dark skinned black woman a monkey and you don't think that there's a problem. Erica and Evelyn, they like to jump back and forth like they got some sense today and then tomorrow they don't got no sense. This is how they truly feel about you, black women. That's sitting up there patting her on the back and begging Safari to treat her right. This is how she really felt about you the whole time. And I think that's the realization that Spice came to. It's like, oh my God, I go hard for this girl. I don't judge her for her being a non-black Latina woman. I don't judge her for none of those things. I treated her like a sister. I looked out for her. I told this man he needs to do right by this girl. And I find out she's trying to play me for a joke. She lied to me about what this man does as a father for his kids. And then she wished me bad while I was going through. Like, I'm fighting for my life and she upset that you're ups Like, I think it's when it hit home. It's like, oh, yeah, this bitch don't really fuck with me. This bitch is a liar and she's taking advantage. And I think that's what really had Spice pissed off. I think that's really what made her so very angry. Like, damn, bitch, I ain't trying to get with your man. How dare you come at me? Like, even to think what you're thinking. Like, Erica, you low-key a witch. 
You're low-key a witch because if you believe in the power of the tongue and you believe in the power of prayer and then you fix your mouth to say you prayed and fasted for this woman, but then in the same breath, you turn around and say she should have died. And y'all going to say that's not racism and colorism right there? Y'all going to defend this lady? She low-key a witch. No, but for real, when it comes to Erica and Evelyn, they suffer from the same illness of can't take and can't accept the fact that y'all may feel like you're at the top of the food chain, y'all on the pedestal, y'all are the spicy Latinas, but these black men that y'all be messing with, some of them still desire to be with black women, and that's what's got y'all shook. That's what got y'all upset. Y'all saw what happened with Evelyn and OG. That's the reason I don't watch Basketball Wives to this day. And I won't be watching Basketball Wives. I love me some Jackie Christie, but I still not going to watch Basketball Wives. When Evelyn found out that Ocho Cinco was trying to talk to OG, she could have died. She could have died because in her brain, she could not fathom how this man had her in his bed. His ring on her finger. And he would be looking at someone like OG? As soon as her and OG got into it, ugly, ugly. Yeah, because that's what you've always felt. That's what you feel about these black women. That's what you feel. You keep them around so that they could be of service to you. But you don't really fool with them like that. And the moment that OG says something you didn't like, girl, your man would want me. Your man was hit. And she starts slapping that cooch. Y'all saw that. Your man would hit all day. I got this, that. And she was like, oh, for real? But you know, your man wanted me. Did you know that? And then what did she do? Evelyn stooped so low that she has been complaining that this man is her abuser. She contacted her abuser to prove the point that he would never want nothing to do with this ugly, black, dark-skinned woman. Just for you to get embarrassed for her to have the real receipt and say oh really well he was trying to talk to this black woman baby he was trying to talk to this dark-skinned chocolate black woman yeah this ass this is a real ass all of this he wanted it ocho cinco wanted me like she will never she will never live that down that lady sat up there and said if she was in a jam she was going to contact her abuser and she did just that when she was in a jam and she felt her back was against the wall and her beauty was being challenged. She contacted her abuser to come get her out of this situation. It meant more like her proving the point that she was beautiful and desired and she was better than OG. That meant more to her than her physical and mental health. That she didn't even care about none of that. And she said, I'm going to contact my abuser. Because he got to tell you. He got to set you straight. He got to give me receipts that you ain't on my level. Just for you to find out. And that's where Erica's at with it. That's where Erica's at with it. She cannot understand. This man courted her. This man was giving her flowers and diamonds and jewelry. All types of stuff. And then he married you just to find out that in real life he can't stand you. He didn't want a second child with you. He didn't want to be married to you no more. He didn't care what happened. He just didn't want nothing to do with you. As beautiful as you were, he was like, nah, yeah, mm -mm, I don't want her. That's why she upset. That's why she's upset. And I hate that for y'all because really, is it that awful to think that maybe this man might also be attracted to black women y'all believe the hype and it's embarrassed you do y'all remember a couple weeks ago there was this picture of erica Mena floating around where she kind of looks like she was brown as hell she looked like she was trying to morph into um bambi a little bit and it was like is this nene is this brandy is this who is this um i guess we know now why she leaked those photos okay she trying she knew this was coming she knew this was coming and she was trying to do damage control so she could turn around and be like, I'm Afro-Latina. I'm not racist. That's what that was about. 
I knew she was up to something. I knew something was up. I knew something was up. That's what this was. She knew that she was about to be shown to the world as a racist. She was about to be exposed. And she had to do something to counteract the effects. And these dummies are in the comments defending her. Because if she tells you if she tells you that you're cute and she likes you, it makes you feel like, okay, I'm on her level a little bit, right? When people be calling y'all pick me's, we ain't calling y'all pick me's just because of dudes. Y'all be, be pick me's for friendship too. Y'all be pick me's for these girls too. Y'all really do. Anyways, we need to wrap this on up. I just wanted to say a little something. Cause you know, a lot of times when we speak on colorism and we're like, oh my God, wish she a colorist and this and that and then that. A lot of times people like to be like, well, how do you know it's colorism? She probably just don't like her. Or this person probably, they just don't like her cause her mouth. Baby, when you've experienced it, you know. You know it when you see it. You don't have to call me an N-word for me to know you're racist. You don't have to call me a black, dark-skinned bitch, burnt, or char, you know, or you don't have to say it for me to know. When you've lived it, when you've experienced it, you know it when you see it. None of this about Erica surprises me. It doesn't surprise me at all. From the day she stepped foot on this Love & Hip Hop platform, I could told you this is who she was. I could told you this is who she is. The way that she talks to people, like the vile, nasty things that she has said to people on this same platform. Well, I guess the New York platform. And y'all surprised that she called this lady a monkey? That's how she's always felt. Anybody that's not her, that's not on the same level that she sees herself as, they're beneath her. And they monkeys and they whatever she want to call them. But anyways, yeah. I'll be tuned in next week. I know that much. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.